In this video, we'll see thermal aspects of pipe flow, particularly the thermal boundary layer and how do we define a mean temperature profile. Like the velocity boundary layer, the thermal boundary layer also has an entry length. That is, if the temperature profile is uniform to begin with and there is heat transfer from the surface of the pipe to the fluid, then the final temperature profile may look something like that. And the initial temperature profile, which is flat, evolves to become the final temperature profile or the fully developed temperature profile. Again, if you look at this edge, it looks very similar to the flat plate profile. However, this like the velocity boundary layer is also annular. So as the boundary layer develops from the surface, it develops all along the surface of the pipe and then it merges to the center. So the maximum thermal boundary layer thickness here is also equal to the radius of the pipe. The entry length for the thermal boundary layer has a similar expression to that of uh, velocity boundary layer, which is 0 0.05 times REPR or 0 0.05 times Peclet number. For velocity boundary layer, it was 0 0.05 times the Reynolds number. Here it is 0 0.05 times Peclet number. This is in the laminar regime. For thermal boundary layer, we usually consider two different types of boundary conditions. One in which the temperature is constant on the surface of the pipe. And the second in which the heat flux from the surface of the pipe is constant. We'll see more of this as we go ahead. But first, let us see, let us define what is called as the mean temperature. Just as we had mean velocity in velocity uh, in uh, momentum boundary layer, here we need to define a mean temperature, which can be used to find the uh, temperature difference between the surface and the Fluid, fluid, fluid. To do that, we'll consider a small elemental volume. Assume that the temperature at the uh, inlet of this cross section is T in, and outlet of this cross section is T out. If the temperature were uniform throughout, then and Conduction, uh, convection, uh, conduction from the wall is the only source of temperature to this fluid. Then Q, which is heat flux from the walls, is MC T out minus T in. So this is in the case where you have uniform temperature. Now, if the temperature were not uniform, but you had a temperature profile, and then we take some kind of average such that the mean of that is what we denote as T in and T out. So if the temperature is varying, T in and T out denote the mean temperatures of the uh, inlet cross section and T out denotes the mean temperature of the outlet cross section. Now, how do we define the mean temperatures based on this? So uh, recognize this MCT is nothing but the flux of thermal energy if you consider it as an incompressible liquid or MCT is all MCPT is also the flux of the um, enthalpy of an ideal gas. Now, the mean temperature is defined as the total flux of this energy across this cross section. So MCTM, this is M, M dot C, TN. So M dot CTM is the total flux of 
uh, thermal energy and that is defined by this expression where we define a small elemental cross section in which the temperature is constant and the velocity is constant and then integrate this flux the local flux in this which is nothing but rho u a is the mass flux which is m dot times c times the local temperature so this is the local uh, mass mass uh, local flux of uh, thermal energy integrated over the entire surface area divided by the m dot c so the mean temperature is defined by this expression substituting for m dot in terms of the mean velocity um we get the mean temperature to be 2 by um r square integral over and if this is a pipe area is uh, this cross sectional area is 2 pi r dr so that and uh, r dr u t the c and c cancels notice that this temperature as defined here is the velocity weighted mean it is not simply integral zero to r of temperature okay so there are two ways you could uh, there are multiple ways you could define the average you can simply say integral zero to r of temperature 1 over r is a mean that is also one mean taken uh, at the temperature profile but what we are look defining here as a mean temperature is the velocity weighted mean because it comes from the flux of the thermal energy and defining like this is convenient for various reasons which we'll see in the uh, coming slides now what is the meaning of a fully developed temperature profile unlike in the case of velocity where the velocity at the fully developed after the when the velocity becomes fully developed there is no change in the velocity as you go along the x however can we define the same thing with res for temperature that can we say that after a given x that the temperature will not be varying with x no that is not correct that is not possible because so long as there is heat coming from here to here that this heat transfer from the walls to the fluid the temperature will always change so as you see from this expression there is a given value of t in so if there is going to be q t out has to be more than t in so even in the fully developed case velocity there is nothing called as a fully developed velocity where t in and t out are the same and there is heat flux so if there is heat flux t in is not equal to t out then how do we define the dimensional velocity uh, how do we define the fully developed velocity profile it so happens that if we define a dimensionless temperature difference theta defined by ts minus t where t is the temperature at any point t and divided by ts minus the mean temperature the same mean temperature as we defined in the previous slide so ts minus t by ts minus tm so this dimensionless temperature turns out to be independent of x when it is fully developed so the fully developed velocity profile is not defined in terms of temperature being constant but this dimensionless temperature ratio difference ratio that has to be constant so the actual temperature itself can change with x like in t in can be different from t out however the dimensionless temperature difference does not change with x so that defines the fully developed temperature profile now let us see how to obtain the convective heat transfer coefficient remember for all external and internal flows the main objective is to obtain the convective heat transfer coefficients 
so that we can carry out microscopic balances. So the outcome of any microscopic differential analysis is to try and come up with some value for this convective heat transfer coefficient. Although we will not be deriving exact expressions here, we will do a lot of simplifications and understanding towards developing such relationship. The local heat flux from the surface to the fluid is defined as follows. So Q double prime is H times Ts minus Tm. Notice that Tm is the mean temperature of the fluid, which could change with x. So Tm is not constant. Ts also need not be constant. So the, this is simply the local temperature, a local heat flux that defines H. So this is just a definition of H, which says that H is Q double prime divided by the surface temperature, local surface temperature minus local mean temperature. Now this in terms of the conductive heat flux can also be written as K times partial T by partial R at R equal to capital R, which is the surface. For fully developed flow, we said that this partial theta by partial x has to be zero. So if partial theta by partial x has to be zero, then we can also say that partial r by partial by partial r of partial theta by partial x, and then swap partial by partial r inside. So this is also zero. Now, partial theta by partial r expanding the definition of theta, which is nothing but uh, Ts minus T by Ts minus Tm. So partial theta by partial R is nothing but partial theta by partial R divided by Ts minus Tm. Now we know from this expression that partial T by partial R is nothing but H by k and this Ts minus Tm cancels. So what we have in effect that for fully developed flow, this is zero, which essentially means this factor is zero. If the temperature, if uh, uh, thermal conductivity is constant, that it does not change with temperature, then this essentially means that H is no longer a function of x. So partial by partial, partial h by partial x is 0. So the uh, heat transfer coefficient initially is very large. And then at, at the entrance, it has to be infinity because the boundary layer, thermal boundary layer is of 0 thickness. So this is infinity. And then in the fully developed region, it becomes constant. So in the fully different region, the heat transfer coefficient is constant and that defines your entry length. So entry length is a length at which the uh, heat transfer coefficient becomes constant. Now let us look at some uh, uh, conclusions about the axial temperature gradient at any radial position. So what we saw here is about the temp uh, mean temperature gradients. Here we are going to see axial temperature gradients at any radial location. It turns out that the uh, fully developed axial temperature gradient, that is partial T by partial X in the fully developed region, is not a function of the radial position. That is at all radius, r equal to zero to r equal to capital R. It is, it is not a function of that. When the boundary condition on the surface is a constant heat, uh, constant heat flux.
Let us see how this is derived. So let us start with the expression for the definition of uh, theta, which is Ts minus T by Ts minus Tm. And that partial t, 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 theta by partial x is zero. Now, recognize that all these are a function of x. Ts, which is the surface temperature, could be a function of x. T, which is the temperature of the fluid, could be a function of x at any r, it's a function of x. And the mean temperature, because it is a mean taken over all these values, that is also a function of x. So all four quantities are a function of x. Expanding this, this partial derivative with, for, with respect to Ts, we write it as a uh, complete derivative because Ts is is only the surface temperature, there is no radial dependence there. This remains a partial derivative divided by this denominator. And then we have uh, this factor divided by partial. This again, uh, Ts and Tm are not functions of the uh, radial coordinate. So that's why the partial derivative has become a complete derivative here. And that equals zero. Now, by the definition of heat transfer coefficient, one by Ts minus Tm can be written as H by Q double prime. And we saw that in the fully developed region, H is constant. And by the boundary condition that the surface uh, the on the surface the heat flux is constant q double prime is also constant by the boundary condition and this is for all fully developed uh, flow, uh, fully developed region so therefore this term is identically equal to zero and what we are left is simply that dts by dx equal to partial t by partial x so we'll keep this term here and let me erase this. Now, let's go back to the definition of Q double prime, which is a uh, definition of heat transfer coefficient, which is Q double prime H times Ts minus Tm. And then take a differential with respect to X on both the sides. So we have, d by dx of q double prime equals dh by dx times this and then h times d by dx of this. Again, recognize that q double prime is not changing with respect to x, neither is h. And therefore, we have d by dx of ts equal to d by dx of tm. Now combining this, so d by dx of dx equal to partial t by partial x, and that is equal to partial t by partial m. So essentially what we have is partial t by partial x is equal to d by dx of ts equal to d by dx of tm. And notice that none of these are functions of the radial position. Therefore, the temperature at any location in the fully developed region is the temperature gradient uh, at any location is not a function of the uh, radial position when the surface uh, boundary condition is a constant heat flux. To summarize thermal boundary layers for internal flows, we defined a concept called as a mean temperature, which is not the regular average of a temperature, but it's a velocity weighted average in the radial direction. We also found that in the fully developed region, it is not that the temperature is constant, but the dimensionless temperature difference was constant and not changing along the flow direction. We also found that in the fully developed region, the convective heat transfer coefficient h is constant. And the axial temperature gradient, 
is same at all radial location when the boundary condition is a constant surface heat flux. Thank you.